So we're going to dive right in here to begin with the questions I'm going to pose to Dan. And this is framed in the way of a Construct 1, Construct 2 discussion. But Dan, I'd like you to also comment about the data and the information uh, that's required in order to create that MIL standard 130. And then shed some light on Construct 1 and Construct 2 here. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, the data is the most important part. It's the start uh, to get these labels compliant against the MIL standard, uh, MIL standard 130 uh, compliance requirement. So when you're talking about the data, you have a Construct 1 or a Construct 2 option. Starting with a Construct 1, that is made up of your cage code and the serial number. Essentially, uh, what we're talking about on a Construct 1 format is that the items are being serialized uh, at the enterprise level or the cage level, if you will. Now, you can also use a DUNS number or a DODAC in place of a cage, but the vast majority of the time, uh, a cage code is used. Mm -hmm. On the Construct 2 format, uh, now you're talking about serialization at the part number level. So now you have not only your cage code and your serial number, you also have the part number that is also part or, uh, which uh, makes up the UID. Now, in terms of the data, the mm. data has to be compliant. And what I mean by that is there are only certain characters that you can use that can make up the data for the label. And those characters are either an alpha or numeric character, letter or number. You can also use a dash or a forward slash character. If your part number or serial number is made up of any other character that you see on your keyboard, a pound sign, ampersand, uh, even a space is considered a character. Those are all considered non-compliant and cannot be used when coming up with a MIL standard 130 compliant label. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you do have a non-compliant character, you have one of two options. You can simply remove those non-compliant characters altogether, mm -hmm. or you can replace them with either a dash forward slash, or of course a number or a letter as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other uh, thing to keep in mind when you're providing the data, it must be in an uppercase uh, format. Mm -hmm. uh, one other last thing to consider is the length or how many characters you can use. So for a total UID, you can use up to a total of 50 characters. Okay. And assuming you're using your cage code, that's going to leave you with 45 characters to play with. So starting with your part number, you can have up to 32 characters to make up a part number. Mm. On the serial number, uh, you can use up to 30. So let's think about that for a second. If you have a total max character of 50, and five are already used on your cage code, and let's say you max out your serial number at 30, mm. that's only going to leave you with 15 characters to use on your serial number. And vice versa, again, if you have your five-character cage and you max out uh, 30 on the serial number, uh, excuse me, if you max out on 32 on the part number, that's only going to leave you 13 characters uh, on the serial. So you want to keep that in mind as well. Uh, I usually don't see too much of a challenge with the customers that we deal with here at A to B, but in terms of compliance, if you do have either extended part numbers or serial numbers, that's something to consider. So t talk to me about the balance between how often do you see the use of Construct 2 versus Construct 1, just to gauge it? Yeah, well, traditionally, uh, Construct 2 by far is used more often than Construct 1. Typically, a Construct 1 format is used if they're marking uh, GFP or government furnished property. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about new end items, uh, acquisition, uh, probably 95% of the time we're talking about a Construct 2 format. 